Greetings from Costa Rica. Welcome back to Costa Rica FAQ. This is chapter or episode 22. Chapter 2, we're talking about the buying process here in Costa Rica. Chapter 2, we're focused on making an offer. Today, I'm going to cover three quick questions. First of all, my one biggest tip about making offers here in Costa Rica. Stay tuned, that's a cliffhanger there. Second, the components of an offer, what should be included. And finally, negotiating your price and a few quick thoughts about that. My name is Matt Rosensteel. I work with Coldwell Banker Tamarindo Realty here in Guanacaste, Costa Rica. I've been here since 2008, live just a little south of Tamarindo with my wife and two kids. Feel free to send me an email to matt at cbtamarindo.com if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whether it's about this video or anything you've seen, anything you're wondering about Costa Rica in general. Excuse me. Without further ado, we will get started with my biggest tip related to making offers here in Costa Rica. And simply put, I want to beg everyone out there, keep it formal. And when I say that, I mean if you want to have the most success negotiating for properties and purchasing or selling real estate here in Costa Rica, make sure you are using formal offers. A lot of people here get tempted to just try a verbal offer or something informal as a way, really in a lot of situations, to get the ball rolling or because oh, they're really anxious, they think that maybe they're going to get a sale or this, you know, the opportunity is exciting. And so quickly they just want to call up the seller and say, hey, I'll give you 100000 for it. Well, here's the big problem with that. You're calling and saying, I'm going to give you 100000 for that. Who's paying the closing costs? How long are you going to have to pay them that $100,000? How many days are you going to be on the hook for a deposit? How long will that be fully refundable? On and on and on and on. There are 10,000 little questions, details of a real estate transaction that can come up. Your offer, <coughs> excuse me, an offer needs to cover those because just saying the price is answering one of those 10,000 questions about how you're actually proposing to buy a property. And many times I've seen an informal offer not lead to a successful conclusion in negotiations, largely because at the outset people didn't really understand either one side or the other what the offer consisted of. You know, so they hear $100,000 and then, well, actually this is with a six month closing period. I'm going to give you $10,000 down and I want that to be refundable for four months. The seller who might have said, hey, yeah, I'll sell you this for $100,000 is suddenly saying, no way am I going to wait six months for you to pay me and accept that your deposit is fully refundable. So again, my one tip in submitting offers for Costa Rican property, make sure you're doing so through a formal offer and make sure that it includes all of the components that I'm briefly going to mention and go over here. Uh, <clears throat> as part of our second question. The components of an offer, really your best guide is to think about covering virtually every contingency that might arise. And the reason you want to do that is so that those contingencies which come up probably more frequently in Costa Rica than you would see in other more mature real estate markets, uh, those contingencies are often manageable if you've outlined in writing beforehand what would happen if X or Y party decides they don't want it, etc. Those contingencies, by covering them in the offer, a lot of times you can get over them and reach a successful sale or complete the business in an amicable way, assuming you've been careful and covered them in your formal offer. So let's discuss, let's talk about the components and in the next chapters of this FAQ, I'm going to be discussing more each of these elements. But to be brief, your offer should cover every little step from the offer being signed to closing on the property. What does that mean? Well, first of all, it should uh, specify exactly 
how quickly you, the buyer, is going to get a deposit into your escrow account. Uh, it should cover whether or not an escrow service is going to be used, who uh, or which escrow service is going to be handling that money, uh, so that de it should cover an exact timeline as to how long you have to make your deposit. Following your deposit, you enter the due diligence period. It should very much cover how long the due diligence period is going to be. Your offer should specify whether that deposit is refundable, how long it is refundable, what un and under what conditions it is refundable, etc so that you have very clear information for an attorney to see, okay, we've had a due diligence process go wrong, I can clearly see the deposit was refundable as long as the buyer notified me in writing before this date, it was covered in the offer and we're good. Uh, so the offer definitely has to specifically lay out the terms and conditions of your deposit, how long it's refundable, etc. It should lay out the terms and conditions of the due diligence process, how long it will last, whether you're going to have the rights to, per to obtain particular records or documents. If you want to specifically say, my due diligence process has to involve at least an eight hour inspection by a structural engineer, that's absolutely fine, but put it in your offer ahead of time so that you said to the seller, Here's how we're buying the property. We want this included in due diligence. Uh, your offer should include exactly how you're going to express approval for your due diligence process, whether or not the deposit immediately will be uh, refundable afterwards, or I'm sorry, non-refundable once you've approved, or whether there will still be contingencies. Uh, your offer should cover the conditions under which your full balance payment is going to come to the escrow service whether that is going to happen a long time before closing or whether you don't have to do so until right before. Your offer should cover uh, everything about who is going to receive the property, whether you're going to assign it to another corporation in your own names, just to be clear. The offer should also include legal information or rather information for the attorneys who are involved with the process so that in order to consider legal notification for the, for the process, notices will be attended to these two addresses for the buyer, these two addresses for the seller, on and on and on. What I mean to express, and while I can't cover every single little thing that's in there, really your offer should be as complete as possible and give a very thorough overview of every aspect of the transaction. If you're getting into a contract to invest $100,000, whether it's $10,000 or $15,000, and you're doing so based on, uh, you know, we're going to be closing on this property in 45 days and we have a one-page letter of intent about the sale, I think you're exposed to a lot of risk involving contingencies on and on, and really your offer needs to be as specific as possible. Uh, one last component that I will touch on, very much your offer should include a lot of disclaimers about the condition of the property, how it will be sold to you, and exactly all of the conditions that will uh, have to be satisfied in order for the property to be considered able to be sold to you, that it's not within the boundaries of a national park that it doesn't have any liens or easements affecting it, that it doesn't have outstanding mortgages. There's a very standard paragraph that is, I, I don't know, 280 words long that includes nine or 10 conditions. We typically include, and most of the professional realtors in this area also include in their offers, make sure that that's included when you go to fill out an offer and formally enter into uh, the process of buying a property, that should be very much specified so that it's clearly in writing from absolutely step one. I'm sure there are other components, little additional items. Those are the major items that come to my mind. Be sure that when you review your offer, think about, okay, well, is this covered? Is that 
contingency covered and don't be too anxious to move forward with the purchase of your property to not say, you know, look, I really want to add a paragraph that specifies exactly who's going to cover uh, this contingency fee. Uh, another component, obviously, keep in mind who's covering closing costs, the escrow service fees, on and on. Uh, but do feel that you can pause the process, include extra language, and really take your time making sure that your initial offer sounds exactly like how you want to buy your property and the contract that you want to be bound by through the whole process. Finally, a word on negotiating your price. Uh, to give you a little bit of insight here, offers in Costa Rica are often made, and I think uh, very much in this region, we're seeing that initial offers are made with substantial discounts. Those discounts usually range between, let's say, 10 and 15 or more percent of a discount on the asking price. My only suggestion in negotiating here in Costa Rica, well, first is that you are presenting a formal offer as your negotiating tool. Not some simple verbal offer, hey, I'll give you 100,000, but really, here is my offer contract, a full, thorough overview of everything we're gonna do for this transaction. Uh, but also, my suggestion would be really to start closer to asking, uh, err on the side of going in with an initial offer that is not as aggressive as you might be tempted to try. Why is that? Because whether it be this real estate market or every real estate market in the world, I've only been working in Costa Rica here, uh, did not practice real estate elsewhere, but here in Costa Rica we see that a lot of sellers might be initially offended, put off, with that first super low offer. It might be an absolutely reasonable price based on your judgment, or it might be reasonable in your mind that, okay, we're gonna start off with a super low offer and we're really willing to come about halfway between here and closing price. Well, we've seen that if you start here, whereas a seller might have been willing to meet you halfway and actually reach a, that amicable, middle number between your aggressive offer and the asking price, because you started with this super low price, the seller says, I'm not coming down at all. I'm not gonna respond to your offer. I'm not gonna take another, you know, they really take oftentimes an egotistical reaction. They don't consider that just business is business and really they hear that first number and they say, I'm not coming down a dime for this person, whereas if you would have started just a bit closer to this middle ground, the seller recognizes, okay, this person is making a much more forthright effort. They're trying to buy this property and they're not starting with a fire sale number. And you give yourself at least the best opportunity, in my opinion, to get the seller in a good mood and willing to come down to your number. If you start out with that fire sale, which I see most people doing around here, Oftentimes, you're going to get an absolute door slammed in your face and the negotiations are off to a bad start. So in summary here for Costa Rica FAQ 22, Chapter 2, we're talking about the first step really in the actual buying process, making an offer. My biggest, most emphatic point was, first of all, only use formal offers here in Costa Rica. You will save yourself heartache you will also be in a lot better position down the road to negotiate. Second of all, we discuss some of the components offer and really the need to just ensure that every aspect of your transition is covered by that offer. And finally, I touched on negotiating your price and where I see people taking their biggest misstep here in Costa Rica, which is starting with a super fire sale offer when really their intention was to reach a middle ground with a seller. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Chapter three in the buying process, we're gonna move forward from making an offer, headed into the due diligence and deposit process. 
Thank you very much for tuning in. Again, my name is Matt Rosenstiel. I'm with Coldwell Banker, Tamarindo Realty here in Guanacaste, Costa Rica. Have a great day. Thanks for watching and Pura Vida.